They call me Flash. I strike, then I'm gone, breathing life in a song. I spit rhymes with the tightest of tongues. My advice to the dumb is wise up, cause time waits for no one and your time's up. So lie low, like you're hiding from 5-0. I tie you in blindfolds and practice my tie bow. Left and right blows, perfected tight flows. Set crowds on fire when I ignite shows. Round of applause, I see jaws drop Cause I shine like the gold in Fort Knox More soul than four tops It's the guy Jack Flash Lab rat, poison in the world like anthrax Travelled the planet and I mastered the languages Leaving them haters dressed in plaster and bandages I'll stop there <laughs> That is, is cool Thank you Thank you, but my question to you is What was all that about? What did any of that mean? What did I really say? What did you learn about me, about yourself, and about life? My name is Jack Flash, and I'm a storytelling songwriter, but I didn't always identify myself that way. I used to want to be the most fierce, lyrically potent rapper on the planet. And those lyrics, I used to write those type of lyrics a lot. And I mean a lot. I mean shoeboxes filled with pads that you could stack higher than me. It was a lot of words, but it didn't really say much. Hip-hop culture and music has been a massive influence in my life. It's shaped the way I think. It's shaped a lot of my perceptions, and I'd argue for the better. My favorite rappers in the world came from New York. Big Pun, Nas, Jay-Z, Biggie, Master Race, Guru from Gangsta. They were my idols. Countless hours spent soaking up that music. As a seven-year-old kid, my teachers, my parents, they began to realize I had this innate talent for poetry. And I began to discover this deep appreciation for music. Mix that together a few years later with some of that unpredictable teenage energy, and there you have it. This unpredictable, hungry, ambitious rapper ready to take on the world. But I must admit, being from Huddersfield in West Yorkshire, <laughs> I always had a bit of an insecurity about my identity. And I felt like in order for me to do what I wanted to do, I was gonna have to need validation. But I went forward. Started to release some music, started to get some fans, and I entered this nationwide rap competition, and I won it. And then they sent me off to the world finals against rappers from all over the world, and I won that. And as part of my prize, they sent me out to New York. Okay, cool. See, New York is hip-hop's mecca. It was born there, it thrives there, and now on the back of my music, I was getting to go out there. So this, for me, was very much a pilgrimage, but I also saw it as a chance for validation. So picture the scene. It's 11 p.m., it's Friday night, I'm at a house party in Brooklyn. There's smoke in the air, chicken in the oven, music blaring, and alcohol fueling through my body, right? If you're from Brooklyn, it might have just been a normal Friday night, but for me, I was in a movie. <laughs> and there's some guys, some guys started rapping in the corner. And this was my chance to show them who the protagonist was. So I went in. I waited for my chance, I saw my opening, and I pounced. I said my lyrics as fiercely as I ever have. On any level, I get your bet, you, your head is nodding. I set it off effortless, not one beat of sweat is dropping. I keep raising the standard while you stay in limbo. I kick in the door, rip down the wall, break the window. So be careful where you aim your insults. Check the way I indulge in liquor binges and linking women. I'm staying single and seeing double. Tell the girl if she thinks we a couple. I ain't here to sleep or cuddle. There's no point in being subtle. And their reaction was lukewarm. <laughs> Fine, it's cool. I, I'll just go check and see if there's any of that chicken left. Yeah. <laughs> but no, look, it was fine. I was in New York and I was there to enjoy myself and enjoy myself, I did. And as I was in conversation with some people, someone approached me. He was this guy and I knew who he was. He was a rapper. And he had no idea that like a month before I'd been sat in a box room on a dreary night in Huddersfield learning the lyrics to his album. But he came up to me, six foot six, Three times as wide as me stomped everywhere he went. New York as it gets. Joined the conversation, and I thought, here we go. This is my chance for validation. This is where he tells me what everyone failed to do before, that I'm the best rapper that he's ever heard, that he wants to work with me on some music, but he didn't quite do that. Instead, he just threw his massive arm over my shoulder, obliviously knocked the air out of my lungs while he endearingly <laughs> slapped my chest, and just said, you got to tell your own story. I didn't know what that meant. Now, creating music for me has always been not really a choice, more of a compulsion. It's always seemed like this irresistible, never-ending maze of expression and discovery. It's always made the world make sense to me. 
And more than validation, I always wanted a connection. I always wanted a connection with the listener. I wanted to offer the type of music that could you know, change somebody's life, that could uplift their day, alter their mood, and make the world make sense to them. I always wanted to inspire. And not long after I got back from New York, I started to feel really creatively frustrated, increasingly disillusioned by my output on my work. I felt like I'd spent years working on this skill set and this craft, but it was feeling redundant. And this forced me to ask myself some very difficult and uncomfortable questions. I had to ask why, when really I wanted to inspire, was I spending so much time and effort working on these generic lyrics? What was with the self-censoring? What was with the bravado? Why didn't I think my life was interesting enough to put under the microscope? Why wasn't I showing emotion? Why did I think showing emotion made me weak? Why did I think having a weakness meant compromising my masculinity? And why wasn't I honoring these creative impulses? You see, there was this block that was stopping me using my life as the source material. Instead, I wrote reams of clever rhymes that sounded the part, but didn't really connect. They didn't really offer much depth to the listener. And don't get me wrong, if you're one of these rappers with this sort of style, I still love listening to it. But certain people can pull it off, and for me, I just didn't think it was working anymore. So after much soul searching, I came to the conclusion that it was all down to fear. It was this fear of being ridiculed if I exposed my real self. This fear of being outed as a fraud. And this fear of not being accepted. The strange thing was, the fear made me write lyrics that ensured I wouldn't be accepted. So there's loads of irony there. I understood why I did this, though. Because if I could create this persona that I could bury my real self in, then I'd never have to look vulnerable. I'd never have to admit that I was broke or heartbroken or weak or hurt or confused or naive or any of those things that make us human. Any of those things that create our stories. From there everything crumbled. I'd invested so much in this identity and it just fell away. And it hurt on the day that I had to accept things were not going to play out the way I thought they were. I wasn't going to be the world's most fierce lyrical rapper. But that didn't mean I couldn't be something else. So it was destroy and rebuild. This time the foundations had to be solid. I remembered something that I'd been taught which was you can only start where you are and you can only work with what you have. Well, I was here. I always am. And what I had was a story, a unique set of perceptions and experiences that no one else has. And I had to look at them without judgment, objectively, and no matter what I found there, no matter how trivial or strange or scary, I had to tell it. I could feel that arm in New York begin to lift. And I got my breath back on the day that I realized that this was the path to connection. I'd like to perform a more recent song for you now, after I've had some water. <laughs> this song is called Single Bed. Let's start the story round the time I moved house, when I couldn't pay rent and I moved to my parents. I'm not too proud, but if the truth's out, I'll admit it was a personal blow. It meant I failed my first attempt to make music turn into dope. And all I've ever wanted was to be a musician. So I had to do what I had to do to bring that dream to fruition. So it's one step back in the hope I'll take two forward. But when your girlfriend stays in your old bedroom, that's awkward. But she, she wasn't bothered by it. She probably was, to be fair. But she still stopped the night And I remember how my swallow pride wouldn't digest The first time the two of us struggled to fit in my bed And how the mattress creaked And we had to sleep without sex And my arm went dead when I left it underneath her neck In a pool of sweat with no room to stretch We walk with our muscles cramped We complained then But now I think I understand Because I can see a silver lining Underneath the quilt we lie and I just worked it all out It feels like we're no hoes diving But every tragedy's a triumph if we turn it around Cause it's only a bad thing if we forget That we wouldn't be as close if it weren't for my single bed 
Then soon enough she moved from up north to London And we found ourselves talking about how we thought we'd function If she moved to the city and I stayed in the sticks But we decided we'd try a long distance relationship So we said our goodbyes and she bought a one way ticket And I promised the second that I could that I would make the trip She got a job but she struggled cause the hours were so hard I couldn't be there so I sent her down flowers and a card Out of frustration she said that was a shit consolation And then we argued about having respect and patience But makeups over the phone are never complete So in the morning I booked a mega bus seat And when we met up she led me to her flat and said it's small The bed goes wall to wall but it's all I can afford I walked in and saw my good luck card Up on a window ledge A little desk with flowers and a single bed And I can see a silver lining Underneath the quilt we lie and I just worked it all out Feels like we're no who's diving Every tragedy's a triumph if we turn it around Cause it's only a bad thing if we forget If we forget That we wouldn't be as close if it weren't for my single bed Then we fell apart that summer We couldn't take the pressure we were under I guess all our hearts had suffered There's only so far one cover can stretch So now we lie alone in bed of our own Let's end the story in the same way it began Moving out, but this time I've a little saved in my bank I can get by on my own I'm in a flat living well with a brand new king size bed that I have to myself and I can stretch yeah and I can sprawl yeah and I can well that's about all see I'll probably just sleep next to the wall and keep my phone charged on the off chance she should happen to call there was beauty in our struggle silver linings in our storm sometimes I sit and wonder if lightning could strike once more or was it a time in our life when we both needed support and we provided shelter for each other when it poured circumstances made us close adversity made us strong they said it was hard lines I wrote them lines into this song I wish I could have gave them more But to be honest with that said We never would have been as close If it weren't for that single bed And I sing I can see a silver lining But Underneath the quilt we lie And I just worked it all out And it feels like we know who's dying But every tragedy's a triumph If we turn it around Cause it's only a bad thing If we forget If we forget Thank you. To ask you the same question on a different mic, to ask you the same question. What did you learn about me and about yourself and about life this time? Now, I don't want you to think this talk is just for aspiring rappers turned storytellers from Huddersfield or for artists or for musicians or that it's restricted to any profession at all because this is for everyone. This is not just about writing songs. This is about how we think about ourselves and how we talk about ourselves. It's about how we value our experiences. It's about our refusal to compromise our expression and it's about accepting ourselves. This idea is nothing new, but it is often forgotten. When we look inside and we find what's there, we don't need to be ashamed. We don't need to have so much judgment. We can be empowered. We can turn our weaknesses inside out. We can give new value to our vulnerabilities if we own our stories. We don't need to regurgitate anybody else's and we don't need to live up to what we think people want from us. We don't have to keep up appearances at all. The last thing this world needs is another clone. 
It takes no courage to copy someone and bravado rarely requires bravery. The thing we need the most is the thing that we do the least. And that's look inwards for the answers. I'm very fortunate that I've had music as a vehicle to learn some important lessons. I've learned that people rarely accept you until you accept yourself. But if you can cross that threshold, incredible things begin to happen. Your story becomes permission and inspiration for other people to tell theirs. And this kickstarts a cycle of communication, compassion and understanding. But it just requires an initial risk. So why is all of this so important? Well, I don't think I'm alone. I think all of us want connection. And I think we're alive in very isolating times where we've grown obsessed with the superficial. And among other things, I think pop culture peddles this ideology of celebrity worship. I think we voyeuristically watch each other's lives on social media and there's a constant pressure to earn more, have more and be more. This all creates this culture of comparison constantly using outside influences as measuring sticks for our own life it's so easy to lose focus so easy to grow disconnected from who we are and what we want but stories are powerful they can reconnect us it's true they get misused and there's stories of lies in our news headlines of deception in our marketing and division in our politics but we can restore the balance every day we have an opportunity to tell an opposing story of truth, honesty and acceptance. This talk was only to remind you what you already know and it's that you shouldn't undervalue your contribution to humanity because there's power in vulnerability, strength in fragility and a story in you that could connect us all if you only dare tell it. Thank you. <laughs>